out of esports now, more into the general gaming realm, we're going to go on to the best debut game. This is for the best game uh, debut created by a new independent studio. We have mm. Carry On, Mortal Shell, Raji, An Ancient Epic, Roki, and Phasmophobia. Now, indies are something I feel similar to esports where at the start of a lot of award shows or game award shows and specific per, uh, sorry particularly the game awards um they didn't really get much love sure. um but now they are getting a lot of recognition especially as you are getting huge titles like phasmophobia that are yeah. going into mainstream so with this category and debut game although some of you in chat may not have heard of some of them it's great that they're getting the recognition and i'm curious who are you guys thinking is going to take this category uh now i don't want to always go to like this is the most popular one so it has to be this because i i do uh prefer the idea of picking the game that would be of the most quality um but at the end of the day quality or not the way that people really gravitated towards a game like phasmophobia which honestly came along at the perfect time you know right mm -hmm. around that the spooky season when everyone's uh, really digging the horror games people just they latched onto it very easily and you know i i played a little bit of it and then very recently actually just yesterday i started to put more time into it because a friend of mine really wanted to play and she knows like every aspect of phasmophobia i started to realize like it's pretty in depth. Like there's actually a lot of mechanics to this game and trying to figure out what kind of ghost you're dealing with. It's, it's fun. Right. It actually gets to be a lot of fun. And then of course, just the, the blast that you can have with your friends getting spooked, you know, freaking right. out, losing your mind, you know, play this at night, shut off all the lights. Like it's, it's, it's a good time. And I think that uh, given all that, it, this, this should go to phasmophobia. I, I kind of agree. I, I'm going through this list and I think Carry On came and had a lot of people talking, but that conversation dropped off really quickly, in my opinion. Uh, Mortal Shell, a game that I, I was rooting for because I'm a big fan of that genre, but that's a very niche genre, uh, very akin to like Dark Souls and stuff like that. Raji, uh, again, that conversation was really great in the fact so that they that they uh, respected its the culture that surrounds that game. Unfortunately, I don't know too much about Roki, um, but then, you know, mirroring what uh, Gabu said about Phasmophobia, that game came out at the exact time it needed to. The fact that it has so much uh, interactivity in that game, the, like it picks yeah. up on the microphone, like stuff like that, that's really cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and it just pushes uh, that indie genre just a little bit more than I see the, these other games doing where... It's a, it's a really unique game. You don't really see ghost hunting um, that often, and you don't see a game that comes mm -hmm. out and you're not you're not going after them to to destroy the zombies or capture the, or the ghosts or whatever. You're just there investigating. Like that's a really unique perspective in that in that world, and I I think that makes it stand out really well against the other other candidates. Absolutely, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to vote for Phasmophobia too. But I I want to give props to Raji because it is not often uh, the Middle East and like most of the the story and the culture in the African continent is lost, uh, especially once you start getting to Western audiences. And for Raji to not only stick to something that uh, is important to their culture and important to them, and just to not compromise their art style for the sake of you know becoming popular that is something that's really yeah. commendable especially uh for a breakout studio um but yeah phasmophobia is just one of those things where it's, it was everywhere it came out at the right time and it has a lot of technological like advancements that i am excited to see implemented into other games mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say Phasmophobia for this one just because, well, firstly, okay, what is this category? Okay, because it says, like, best debut game created by a new independent studio. What makes it the best? Like, I think they need to be a bit more specific with this category. Is it the best, yeah. you know, in terms of mechanics and gameplay at launch? Like, what are we saying for this? Um, is it just the well, best? Well, that's... That's a bit frustrating with this. Uh, yeah, category that, that's here. why it's it's hard. You either have to look at this as like a critic, or you have to look at this from a fan perspective. Because mm -hmm. I think if we're if we're if we're being critical about it, and we're looking at what potentially is the most quality game here, you would maybe go with something like Raji or maybe even Mortal Shell. I mean, Carrion also, but like. Yeah. 
I don't know. I guess I'm just thinking purely from the fact that there were so many people playing Phasmophobia and it, and it started to become such a phenomenon for a little bit, you know, right alongside a game like Among Us that it would be weird to not see it win the award, if that makes sense. Yeah. I agree. The, the category yeah. feels really scattered too because you have two, uh, two, three very indie games. Like these are like Raji, Roki, and Carry On are very indie games, very kind of like mm -hmm. smaller games. Mortal Shells, like you said, is akin to like Demon Souls, Dark Souls. Like it, it does have a bigger scale and a bigger production. And then Phasmophobia mm -hmm. taps into it, just feels like all the cat all of these different games tap into something different and it doesn't right, make yeah. sense to pit them against each other yeah and you know that's why i have to look at it in terms of you know yes popularity and user experience i i think it would be phasmophobia because it's just so different than anything else in this category um that it creates an exciting uh user experience so for me that's that's phasmophobia um, now we're moving on to content creator of the year. Um, I know Caboose is a bit, you know, burned by this I was one. snubbed! <laughs> <laughs> Boycott the awards. Boycott the awards. How dare they? <laughs> um, we, oh, have, man. Uh, we have Alano Pierce, J.N. Lopez, Nick Merce, Tim the Tatman, and Valkyrie. And this is for a streamer or content creator who has made an important and positive impact on the community uh, this year. This is a really stacked category. Yeah. You yes. know, when I think of someone like Alana who has done so much charity work this year, and mm -hmm. then even Jay and Lopez who started Black Girl Gamers, um, yeah. you know, Tim the Tatman who like, I feel like everybody's always <laughs> talking about as well as Val Valkyrie and Nick Merce. Like it, it's, it's just so hard. Yeah. yeah, this is a this is a tough one um, because I, I think at the end of the day I'm probably voting Alana Pierce here uh, mainly because I, I look at the success that Alana Pierce has had this year. First of all, uh, breaking up like really doing her own thing as a content creator mm -hmm. um, and and like doing a great job at that. Then now she's in Cyberpunk. Uh, mm -hmm. Now. She's right. She's a writer working at Sony Santa Monica, like Santa Monica Studios. She's working on the next God of War game. That is like the ultimate success story here. Um, if I'm thinking of anybody else, I, I might. I mean, I don't know. This is so tough. Literally anyone could win here. I mm -hmm. think of Nick Merckx yeah. and the fact that he's been getting crazy numbers on Twitch with Warzone. I think of Tim the Tatman specifically of when he had like 200,000 people watching just to see if he could win a game at Fall Guys. Oh, yeah. You know, I think of uh, someone like Valkyrie who, you know, uh, switched over from Twitch to YouTube and is having such great success there now doing a lot of amazing things with Among Us, and then as you mentioned with uh, with Jan Lopez for uh, for creating, uh, was it um, Black Girl Gaming? Black Girl Gaming. Yeah. So like, there's there's so much success. Like, there's there's a success story for each and every one of these content creators. But I think I probably my vote goes to Alana Pierce. Yeah, I, I okay. yeah, I'm gonna. I this is tough because you know this category is really focusing on you know making a important and positive impact on the community. So, you know, I look at Tim the Temin, I look at Valkyrie, and I look at Nick Merckx, and yes, they have those mm. numbers. They they do great things. They do charity streams as well. But when I think of important and positive impact, Jan Lopez and Alana Pierce come to my mind because specifically Jan, she started a whole initiative to um, yeah. amplify yeah. the voice um, of people, minorities within the gaming community who feel like their voice isn't heard. And mm -hmm. that's like that's all she works on as a content creator. Right. Then you look at Alana and Pierce, who has done charity streams like almost every weekend this year and yeah. raised she raised like over a million um mm -hmm. for charities in the year. And like that's just insane on its own. Plus, like you mentioned, Kabu, she's had an amazing year. I think I'm gonna take it to Alana. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I got to kind of echo what you guys are saying. Plus, I mean, she she co-hosted the Accessibility Awards this year. Um, First yeah, ever. The, yeah, the, yeah, the rise of success she's seen um, has been astronomical. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I will give um, her my, my pick. But slightly mm -hmm. under that, I'll, I would put Tim the Tatman only because he broke out of like, broke into the mainstream with, uh, you know, ESPN was even covering his you know victory run uh and fall guys and stuff like that i could see him get the award as well but i ultimately i gotta i gotta go alana mm -hmm. 
I think all right. If we're playing for points, Tim the Tatman is going to win. I, oh, I, wow. That's that's my vote. Tim the Tatman is going to win because he has the numbers. Now, my wow. personal vote, though, who I want to win is J. N. Lopez, and the reason is because you you said part of it, Camille, is that what she's done for unrepresented and unheard communities. She's done that also for underrepresented game developers. She yeah. is Spellbreak, Spirit Fair. These are just a couple games that she has helped push that most people wouldn't have even heard of. I found yeah. out about Spirit yeah. Fair through her. So the fact that she is willing to not go play Fall Guys and, and not go play Fortnite and, and, and all this other stuff for the views, but, but strictly say, hey, look, these are underrepresented communities. These are underrepresented games. I, I really want to use my platform as a way to lift them up. I just have so much respect for that because there's so many people who do it reverse. They, yeah. you know, they farm the views and they get popular and then they're like, let's use the platform. You know, and I'm not saying that like Tim the Tatman or Alana Pierce, anyone has, or that anyone has done anything like that. Uh, Alana Pierce has done amazing this year, but I think Tim the Tatman will win. But my vote is for JN Lopez. Mm. All right, uh, best multiplayer for outstanding online multiplayer gameplay and design, including co-op and massively multiplayer experiences, um, irrespective to game genre or platform. You have yeah. Animal Crossing New Horizons, Among Us, Call of Duty Warzone, Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout, and Valorant. It's Among Us, do uh, I even need to say anything yeah, so so I remember we talked a little bit about this one last week. Um, right. And and yeah, I believe like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Like the, it, it could be a number of these. I think Animal Crossing is, is the one that is the least likely yeah. um, just because. And, and I said this last week as well, where like the, the multiplayer component to it isn't what shines through the most about Animal Crossing. Um but when it comes to Among Us, like that, that game was built uh, through a community experience playing with multiple people, and it became such a massive, massive game through that. Uh, and, and it's good, too. It's not just one of those games where it's popular, so it should win. No, it's actually a really well-designed, really fun game. Now, granted, maybe a lot of what makes it so fun is kind of the, the honor system, the community-created rules, you know, muting yeah, yourself sure. when yeah, you're yeah. dead, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's created, it's, it's huge. It is absolutely huge as a game at this point, getting like a spotlight in the game awards and revealing a new map. Uh, so they clearly recognize how big of a game it is, but if we're going with like a close second, if we're, if we're sticking, like if I, if I were to pick any other game besides among us, I would maybe think that, um, the Valorant takes this. I, I got I to gotta say Among Us, it, it's really hard not to because I have friends who don't aren't in the gaming world they're they're not into esports they don't watch mm. video games regularly but they have youtubers and, and like personalities that they watch and, and subscribe to that were playing among us and they're like wait what's that i want to play that and it's easy because you can put it on your phone you can put it on your computer you can put it you yeah. know it, it's super accessible and i think it, it's done a great job at reinventing itself i don't think valorant will win i want it to uh, but I just don't think it will. And then Warzone is is Warzone. Hey, Warzone! <laughs> oh, don't knock Warzone, okay? If it was, you know, if I was not going for the points, I would want Warzone to win, okay? <laughs> it's it's a great experience. I've I've I think I have like over four hundred hours um, with oh Call Lord. of Duty. It's, it's a lot. Holy There's smokes! A wow. lot, a lot of late nights. Um, but. <laughs> You know, I'm looking at this from the outside, Malik, what you said. I have friends that do not game at all. And because of how accessible Among Us is um, through, you know, being played on your phone and just people outside of gaming playing it and then other people that follow those people want to play it as well. Mm -hmm. I think Among Us makes the most sense here just because it made the most noise this year. It's provided different uh communities to come together in this one way that's just really exciting and fun and a lot has to do with like those community rules but i think that's because it is such a great experience that it it should even though the community really um made it special 
and yes, the game does have its issues as well. Like trying to get into like a private freaking room and having to like <laughs> the phone multiple times and try again, try again. Um, it, I think, you know, when you're looking at outstanding mul multiplayer gameplay and design, maybe Among Us doesn't have the greatest gameplay. Like it can improve there, but it just makes up on the experience. Um, they, it makes up for that through the experience. And I, I think that's why it's gonna take it. I think also too, we gotta, we gotta recognize what Among Us has done being an old game and revitalizing itself. And like you said, Caboose, building a community and, and bringing in people who aren't gamers and, you know, aren't in that lifestyle, bringing them into that and, you know, exposing them to yeah. our community and our world. And I, for that, I have to applaud it. And it's done such a great job. And I, I hope that they keep developing it and keep growing it because I could see it having some longevity. I just hope yeah. that they don't start to, you know, fall into some some of the same traps as other games it's, like Fall Guys. It's tough because they're taking a, a little bit of time to get this new map out. I understand that this stuff needs time, um, but I figured, you know, like with the amount of money that's probably coming in, that they'd be able to be like, all right, let's let's get a new map out right away. Um, I'm hoping that I, I'm thinking it's not just going to be one map that's revealed uh, oh. at the game awards. I, I think, I think okay. we're going to get uh, a big content drop coming for the game soon because it's not that it's dying down. There's still a lot of people playing, but I feel like one new map isn't going to be enough to bring back the hype. You know what yeah. I mean? Like people are yeah. now, now among us is sort of just becoming a casual game where it was starting. Like at one point it was like every night, get the group together. Let's play among us, you know? Now it's just like, oh, yeah, I mean, we don't really have nothing else to play. We'll just jump on Among Us for an hour or two, you know? So sure. we'll see. Right. We'll see what's going to happen. But again, it deserves to, like, it's going to win best multiplayer. There's just no doubt. Steve, did yeah. we get your input here? Yeah, yeah. I went first. Uh, I said went, Among okay. Us, no debate. There's no conversation. Right. In my so opinion, all it, yeah. Unanimous Among Us. All right. Best sports and racing for the best traditional and non traditional sports and racing game, Dirt 5. F1 2020, FIFA 21, NBA 2K21, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. This shouldn't even be know. a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> right, if, even, if, come on. If anybody doubts this, let's put this in mind. NBA 2K21 put real game or real life ads in their game <laughs> that you can't skip. Awful. What? Huh? And then Tony Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2, they brought back the original soundtrack with a bunch of new songs. So I mean, I got to yeah. go Tony Listen, Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Does do, do any of the but other does games it still that count? Isn't, hold you on. know like does Ooh. it still count because it's still one and two. You know what but I mean? But it's on the list. It's on yeah. the list. You know, whether yeah. or not it, it's a new whether game. Not it counts is a different conversation. Um but if it's on the list, if it's nominated, uh that it's Listen, does yeah. any of the other games nominated have Jack Black in it? <laughs> Uh, you rest his know case. Jack Black <laughs> is, uh, you know, a uh, mascot for one of the teams FIFA in 21. Oh, I <laughs> totally forgot. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know what? I would, I want to say uh, Tony Hawk as well. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, to mix things up, I'm going to say 2K. NBA wow. 2K. Oh, wow. 21. I, I would have expected if if I had to choose a second pick, it's going to be FIFA Twenty One because the I, the global audience there yeah, is so. FIFA huge. usually yeah. sells like the most, um, like for sports games. I think it usually sells like the most um, games like every year, year after year. But I yeah. feel like NBA Two K, the fact that they put ads in there just shows how much money they have. Plus, we're forgetting at the beginning of the pandemic when sports was not happening, Two K right. was on broadcast like was on sports channels. So um, I feel like I'm going to go with 2K here. It's Just Tony Hawk. For me. It's Tony it's Hawk for me. I mean, my Carrie's Visions put so much love and attention into that game to get the original soundtrack, all the, all the maps, all the skaters in there. Like they cared about that game. And from my opinion, like, they did it successfully. They didn't take any compromises. I will say though, a, a close second would be Dirt Five. They they delivered a really fun, um, you know, dirt racing game uh, with like really fun arcade aspects to it. But it's Tony Hawk for me. Come on, 
Come on. <laughs> I will. I, if we want to talk about like impact too, F1 2020 did a great job because I, this is a true story. I went over to my grandparents and he was watching the F1 races and he didn't realize that it was a video game. Because yeah. they they did the F1 championship where they put them in sims and it was in it was a game they had a full sim racing setup, and and that is incredible that they can completely take over the NASCAR audience and the F1 like international auto sports audience and just completely captivate them and break records while also uh, keeping the immersion for some of these older people who get upset when they hear there's a video game on their TV you know so I think <laughs> F1 does deserve a little bit of a little bit of props for that. I will say, like, and I've said this, I don't know if I said this on stream before, actually, but I've said it at work. Um, <laughs> that I feel like F1 esports is one of those esports that is the best to um, have for traditional sports goers because the graphics are just amazing. Gorgeous. And legit, if I'm watching like an F1 tournament, I can't tell if I'm actually watching real racing because it is so well done. Um, but yeah, it, it's great uh, to hear that insight, Malik. Um, now we're going to move on to the best sim and strategy. Best game focused on real time or turn based simulator, um, simulation, sorry, or strategy gameplay, irrespective of platform. You have Crusader Kings 3, Desperado 3, Gears Tactics, Microsoft Fight Flight Simulator, and XCOM Chimera Squad. I'm going I'm Flight Sim on this one. I, I'm just I'm guessing on this sim. one and going Flight Sim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah. I, I played a couple of these games in this category, but Flight Sim uh, blew me away. The fact that you can take off from like Billy Bishop Airport here in Toronto and like <laughs> your apartment, I was like, what? How? How is this that even possible? Like how? the tech technology behind this game is astounding, and the fact that they pulled it off. The the one thing I'm still holding out for is like a console release of this game. But the yeah, setting this up on a PC and just being able to fly around the world especially this year where that was impossible <laughs> to a certain extent <laughs> was, it was really great. It, it was awesome. And it was a step up from what we usually see from like Microsoft um, in terms of just like the breadth of this game and the capabilities mm. of this game. Yeah. So I think it's unanimous. Flight Sim uh, is going to take this category. Uh, next is best family. So for the best game appropriate for family play, irrespective of genre or platform, Animal Crossing New Horizons, Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time, Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout, Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, Minecraft Dungeons, and Paper Mario The Origami King. I'm going with um, Animal Crossing on this one. Yeah, I was yeah. going to say Animal Crossing because like, if you just think about the category in a game that potentially any member of your family could play and find some enjoyment out of, I think out of all of the games there, the one that would be most likely is Animal Crossing. I look at something like Crash Bandicoot, and if my dad played Crash Bandicoot, he'd be over it. <laughs> <laughs> he'd be over it. Uh, if he played Paper Mario probably wouldn't be into it uh, i don't know if he would be into animal crossing as well but you know i i could see that being the most family friendly game and again it's it's nominated for game of the year so seeing it in another category i feel makes it even more likely yeah, yeah. i i wear my love of animal crossing on my sleeve uh but taking it taking that aside uh it's it's been one of nintendo's best-selling games period um and yeah, I, I think it's just the most accessible game uh, in terms of what players can jump into and play together. Although like the multiplayer and like co-op functions are a bit weird in that game. Uh, but looking at the category, this is always the Nintendo category, first and foremost. Like yeah. Nintendo always walks away with best family. So I, I got to give it to their game, the Animal Crossing. Malik, you agree, right? Animal Crossing? Yeah, Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Animal Crossing. Yeah. Yeah. I, it hurts it hurts it hurts my sony fanboy heart that crash won't get any recognition because i love crash but it's uh crash is one of those games you play it because the movement's kind of it's like a broken mario right it's like uh it's like if mario was hyped up on caffeine and was on a sugar rush and just couldn't stop moving but it, it's got to be animal crash animal crossing for the uh accessibility 
Yeah, definitely. All right, let's move to a category I know Caboose is excited about. Best fighting for the best game designed primarily around head-to-head combat. Grand Blue Fantasy versus Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate, Street Fighter V Champion Edition, One Punch Man, A Hero Nobody Knows, and Under Night in Birth X Late. I hate <laughs> that's a That's a mouthful. You guys, stop. <laughs> Just stop with these names. Um, Caboose, I'm going to go to you first. I have a feeling I know what game you're going with. Yeah. Yeah, this is another one we talked a little bit about last week, but again, to just kind of reiterate, like the amount of content that was put into Mortal Kombat 11, and especially considering that it's Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate that's being nominated, so it's the current version of the game with the first combat pack and the six DLC characters from that, the second combat pack technically with Aftermath, and alongside that, the DLC story that you get from that, and the three new characters, and then now combat pack two with three more characters, um, plus everything that was already in the base game. It's just, it's one of the most well put together fighting games, in my opinion. I know yeah. that when it comes to the actual scene, there are a lot of people who have specific opinions about it. Some people definitely has to have their grievances with Mortal Kombat 11. But I think from a presentation standpoint, from a technical standpoint, I think that Mortal Kombat 11 really stands and it rises above all the rest of the nominations. Um, it's a beautiful looking game. And it's a very uh, inviting game for somebody who may be new to fighting games. One of the things that I cannot commend enough about Mortal Kombat 11, and this came to Injustice 2 towards the end of that game cycle, is the tutorial mode. And mm -hmm. it's it's not one of those tutorial modes where you're going to jump into it and it's like, this button is the light punch. Okay, have fun. Like, it, no, it teaches you about frame data. It teaches you about flawless blocking, about wake up roll, break away, all the different mechanics of the game. And it's one of those things where if you play through it, you have to complete the objective to move on to the next step. And right. so it actually, it forces you to learn and you'll start to actually gain experience from playing the tutorial. It's one of the few times I will unironically tell somebody who's like, how do I get better at this game? And I'll tell them, play the tutorial, yeah. put some time into it. Like, don't be lazy. Don't procrastinate it because, oh, it's just the tutorial. No, it's like so well put together. And then overall, again, like the story for the game is awesome. It's got such a cool story mode. And the expansion is like the expansion aftermath is even better than the main story campaign for Mortal Kombat 11. And it's like pure Mortal Kombat to its core. Uh, and I, I always look at MK from like a story perspective as like that those easy to digest massive blockbuster films where yeah, you can look into the lore a little bit and find some extra tidbits, but at the end of the day, it's like shove popcorn into your face kind of fun. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's how I look at the franchise in general is that there, it's always just a blast. You know, like there's certainly people who have their thoughts about the gore and 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 the M-rated nature of it. As a matter of fact, it invented the ESRB, uh, Mortal Kombat as a franchise. But yeah, like just compared to the rest of the nominations, which I do think they're all great fighting games. Like Grand Blue would probably be a close second uh, for this pick. Um, but compared to the other fighting games, it's just the most well presented. Yeah, I, I agree. I think uh, Mortal Kombat, when you think of it, it's just everyone knows Mortal Kombat, right? And yeah. when you think of Ultimate, you do think of the expansion of the story. And for me, Mortal Kombat, the story is why I love that franchise so much. Mm -hmm. Um, as well as like obviously the the gruesomeness and the fatalities and even having like the friendships back and all that stuff it just makes it such a fun experience and there's something for everyone when you think of that game when you think of like Street Fighter 5 it's like okay Street Fighter's been there but like what are they doing new and um, that's kind of where my decision goes into saying Mortal Kombat for this one. Yeah, I think when you look at the, the list of games and you look at which game had the most mind share, in my opinion, in my eyes, it's always been Mortal Kombat 11 with the introduction of new characters, new story elements, all that. It, Mortal Kombat had that that mind share all throughout the year. And mm -hmm. given that last year, Mortal Kombat 11 proper went up against Super Smash Brothers, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure Smash Brothers took it took the victory last year. I think this is their year to to not only you know, get their dues for this year, but also kind of make up for last year as well, because it is a full right. package at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to say uh, I'm gonna have to say Mortal Kombat too. But the only thing is, is I'm a little bit surprised. I mean, I understand if Smash Bros won last year, why they wouldn't want to put it on again. But choosing One Punch Man and Under Night in Birth X over something like Brawlhalla is a little bit is a little bit weird to me because Brawlhalla has a, a kind of like a little bit of an indie following, but I feel like it has a stronger following than like a One Punch Man fighting game. That's fair. Yeah. But Mortal uh, Kombat for me. Oh, Mortal Kombat. More Mortal Kombat to uh, come around. Before we take our quick uh, break, let's just look at this category. Best role-playing game. This is for the best uh, game design for rich player character customization and progression, including massively multiplayer experiences. You're looking at Final Fantasy VII Remake, Genshin Impact, Persona 5 Royale, Wasteland 3, Yakuza Like a Dragon. Uh, when I look at this, I immediately think Persona 5 is the best, you know, Persona 5 is just a really great, well thought out, 100 plus hours of fun. Um, and it's just it's just put together with such style and class that I, I think it deserves to win. But then at the same time, you have Genshin Impact, which is kind of taking the world by storm as well. Um, but just to solidify my love for Persona 5, I'm going with Persona 5. Yeah, this is a three-legged race between uh, Final Fantasy VII, Genshin, and Persona Five. To be honest, yeah. um, and this it's tough uh, because yes, Genshin Impact is huge. It's free to play. Ton of people are playing it. Um, just it's a massive. It's grown such an audience. Final Fantasy VII nominated for Game of the Year, so that could potentially be a front runner for that reason alone. But I think I'm going with Persona Five Royale mainly because everyone I've talked to. Who has played Persona 5 is like, dude. <laughs> like they're like, Persona 5. And I'm like, okay, okay. Like, I'm not, I'm not super into RPGs. I mean, I'm not against RPGs. That's for some reason like a three-letter thing in, in video games that scares a lot of people. Um, but like RPGs, I, I mostly welcome and I'm like, I'm down for that. Um, but I don't play a ton of them. Uh, however, if we're talking specifically on the category, right? Like, you could say Final Fantasy has the biggest chance to win because it's nominated for Game of the Year, but as a role-playing game and just that, I think from what I'm hearing and from what I've seen, Persona 5 is the one that succeeds the most. I gotta go with Final Fantasy Remake. Um, that, I mean, that game has such Not a light. Not even a full game. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it is to a certain extent. It it not only respected the original, but reimagined it. It's it's not just a remake, beat by beat. The fact that they were able to kind of put a twi twist on the game, uh, to modernize it. And this is speaking from someone who I've never liked Final Fantasy, mm. any game in that series. But I love this game. And by the time that the credits rolled on that game, I was like, oh, I'm invested with each of these characters and. I, I think that they've done a really cool job kind of um, putting a twist on on this franchise. But yeah, if, if I were to give a runner-up, it would be Persona, obviously. But I think that there's so much history and respect put into Final Fantasy VII Remake that it's got to take it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go with Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, I, I I really like Persona, uh, but I think just in terms of like reinventing itself for a series that's so convoluted and so uh, like so in depth that people are scared to get into it, uh, mm -hmm. Final Fantasy VII uh, Remake did a really good job of trying to uh, make it a little bit more accessible and open. All right, there you have it. Those are our predictions so far. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be right back with the rest of the categories.